Hi, my name is Edward Leung, and I work for the YMCA's YGAP program here in the YMCA of Eastern Ontario. Welcome to the YGAP video series. Here, we break down new research and answer important questions about youth and gambling. At YGAP, or the Youth Gambling Awareness Program, our mission is to raise gambling awareness amongst youth aged 8 to 24 and adults involved in youth's lives across Ontario through free services using a balanced and neutral lens, as well as providing relevant harm reduction strategies. This is our third video in our series on gambling in media. Today, my colleagues Dua and Keely will be talking about how gambling opportunities have changed as media advanced. Keely, I am so excited about today's topic. In this video, we will look at new gambling opportunities. Me too, Dua. In our last video, we talked about online mystery boxes as an example of a new gambling opportunity for youth that developed alongside the internet. That was such an interesting discussion. And I know today we will cover three new gambling opportunities such as loot boxes, premium model, and esports betting. Exactly. But before we get started, I think it's important to remind everybody of YGAP's definition of gambling. What do you think? Absolutely, I agree. Here at YGAP, we say gambling is when you risk something of value, whether it's money or an item, and you don't know if you will win or lose. Perfect, thanks. Now let's jump into our discussion. Let's start with loot boxes. Do uh, many youth know what they are, but for those who don't know, what are loot boxes? Essentially, loot boxes are virtual containers, often a box that holds an in-game item or items. You don't know what's inside the loot box before you buy it. What is inside could be less than or equal to or greater than the value of purchasing the box. Exactly, and I know in some of the games I've played before, they've had different names like Loot Crates or Loot Llamas. That's such an interesting name. I agree, and to open or unlock a loot box, players pay with either in-game currency like gems, coins, V-Bucks, or real-world money. Often, loot boxes contain skins. And you might be asking yourself, what are skins and why are they important? Well, if you've never heard of them, skins are items that are mostly aesthetic. For example, they can change a person's, a character's look. Sometimes skins can be items as well, like armor, which can help the player. What makes skins valuable? Well, there are more rare or legendary types and more common types of skins, and it is less likely that a player will receive a more rare or valuable skin in a loot box. Going back to what you had mentioned earlier, Keely, could you explain how skins can become a type of virtual or in-game currency? Yeah, absolutely. So people can't sell them within the video game, but they can go to a third party or another site and sell them for virtual or sometimes real world money. They can use that money like any other type of currency on things like placing bets. Thank you, Keely. I think we should talk a bit more about loot boxes and what makes them so appealing. Yeah, did you know that loot boxes use what's called a variable ratio reinforcement schedule? Wow, could you break that concept down for us? Of course, basically it's a way of saying that our brains become more engaged in an activity when there's an element of chance where we don't know what the results will be. Oh, so this makes players want to keep buying and opening loot boxes, hoping to get a more valuable or rare item? Yeah, exactly, Dua. So another gambling activity that I can think of that uses the same method are slot machines at casinos. Yep, absolutely. But then why doesn't Canada consider loot box unlocking a form of gambling? Because it falls under YGAP's definition. That's a great question. In Canada, there are three things required for it to be considered gambling. Consideration, chance, and prize. Consideration means a payment of something is required to play the game. The second is chance. The outcome of the game must rely on chance and not skill. Last and most important is prize. Money, money's worth, 
or something of real world or of tangible value is awarded. Great, and getting back into our discussion of loot boxes, loot box unlocking does not meet the last requirement to be classified legally as gambling. That makes sense. So the prize won in the game is not considered money's worth. Exactly. But as we mentioned earlier, in some games and on third party sites, virtual video game items such as skins can be sold for real world or virtual money. Yeah, and this is why there are some countries that have changed policies to include loot boxes under their definition of gambling. For example, Belgium. Belgium included it in their definition of gambling and has banned loot boxes from video games. That's a great step. You know, when I was reading research, I learned that a youth spring doesn't fully develop until 25, which explains why they have underdeveloped impulse control and are at an increased vulnerability to gambling mechanisms and behaviors and other risky activities. That's absolutely right. This also explains why youth may be drawn to gambling with money after being exposed to simulated gambling. It is because it creates a disconnect between virtual and real world currency. Yeah, and another study says that there is a relationship between loot boxes and problem gambling. Really? How so? Well, as the severity of problem gambling symptoms increased, so did the amount of money spent on loot boxes. Non-problem gamblers spent the least amount of money on loot boxes, so this suggests that appropriate regulations need to be put in place. I definitely agree. But before we move forward, what do we mean by problem gambling and gaming? How would we define that? Well, at YGAP, we define problem gambling or gaming as when it starts to impact a person's life in a negative way. The signs can differ from person to person depending on how that activity is impacting their lives. Thank you, Kiwi. This brings us to our second example for today, freemium model games. Yeah, so the word freemium comes from the words free and premium. They are types of apps or games that are free to download and play, but have optional in-game purchases. So they can give the player a chance to keep playing by cutting wait times, for example, or unlocking new features. This kind of sounds like one of my favorite games, Pokemon Go. Exactly. Pokemon Go is a great example. Other popular games include Candy Crush and Clash of Clans. Jua, would you like to discuss how this can be gambling? Absolutely, Keely. When a player pays for a chance to advance in the game, the outcome is still outside of their control. So there is no guarantee of a win or an advance. Did you know that virtual casino style games or simulated gambling games also use the premium model? Wow, I didn't know that, but yeah, it does make sense. Yeah, and they're free to play and the odds of winning are often higher. They create more big wins and winning the jackpot and bonuses is actually easier. But it's free, then that must mean that there's no risk. Well, not exactly. They're designed to encourage people to move to bet with real money. So that means that the odds of winning are better and there are higher payouts, which is very thrilling and exciting. People might think that they have the same success with the sites that bet with real money. Can't this lead people to fall into what's known as the gambler's fallacy? Absolutely, Dua. But can you explain what the gambler's fallacy is? Absolutely, Keely. The gambler's fallacy is when past events influence future gambling outcomes. This means players are tempted to pay to play to keep feeling success or accomplishment, but the pay to play sites do not have the same odds or payouts. That makes sense. I understand why this could impact the transition from virtual sites that gamble for free to gambling in real life with real money. You know, studies show that individuals who engage in simulated gambling games are more likely to gamble. Around 20% or one in five adults or adolescents who play on free gambling sites move to bet with real money. Great. Thank you for sharing all of that. Now we're going to move on to our last example, esports. So for those of us who don't know, could you explain what esports are? 
Absolutely. Esports is professional video gaming. There are video game competitions or tournaments that can take place in large venues and can be promoted on streaming platforms. Like professional sports, esports have skilled players, large audiences, and fan bases. There are leagues, tournaments, sponsorships, advertisements, media coverage, merchandising, prizes, and player celebrity status. Absolutely, and people can bet on esports through formal betting, like using websites, or also through informal betting, like between friends. They can use all types of currencies as well, real world or virtual money or virtual items like skins. In the past few years, the esports and esports betting industry has grown. Did you know in 2019, the global esports audience had an estimated 454 million viewers made and they made 1.1 billion excluding esports gambling. It was predicted that esports betting reached 10 billion US dollars in 2020. That is a lot of revenue. And even though licensed gambling sites are regulated, there is a concern that third party sites are allowing underage betting with virtual items like skins. Definitely, and there are risks as some of these sites are unregulated. This is blurring the lines between gaming and gambling. We think that there should be more research to better understand the psychosocial impact of esports betting on youth. Absolutely, and adequate regulation should be established globally. Absolutely. Since we've shared some of the risks with new gambling opportunities, it's important to talk about ways we can stay safe. So let's talk about harm reduction strategies. For sure. Harm reduction strategies are strategies or tips to stay safe when participating in an activity that has risks. This includes setting time and money limits when gambling. Setting time limits are incredibly helpful in balancing gaming and gambling activities with other things like spending time with your friends and family. Setting money limits can help keep track of how much you're spending on things like loot boxes, in-game purchases, or esports. Thank you for sharing that, Keely. I think it's also important to talk about prepaid cards. Prepaid cards help protect banking information from unreliable sites and help you stick to your budget. Yep, and when playing video games, it's important to know that they are skill-based games, but also include elements of chance. Your ability does not impact the outcome of a game of chance. Another way to stay safe if you choose to bet on esports is to recognize that esports betting is not a way to show support to your favorite players. Most of the time, they don't even know that you're betting on them. And it's also important to have open discussions about the risks so that youth have a good understanding on how to stay safe when engaging with technology, gambling, and gaming. All great harm reduction strategies. To finish all of our videos, we share important information on where you can get free and confidential support in your community. If you want more information or if you ever feel like you need to talk to someone about gambling, there is Connex Ontario, C-O-N-N-E-X Ontario, available online or at 1-866-531-2600. Thank you so much for joining us. We hope that you will join us again in our fourth and last video in our gambling and media series. We will talk about how gambling advertisements are currently regulated and more harm reduction strategies. Thank you so much and have a great day.